Okay. Hey, welcome back, everybody. You know, this picture has absolutely nothing to do with physics, but I just thought it was cool. Now, for our second uh, lesson on video on video physics today, um, I'm going to show you how to integrate the flux from a non-uniform field. And um, I just want to remind people that what I'd like you to do first is to just kind of listen and um, pay attention. And I'm going to ask the substitute teacher to pause the slide after I'm done talking so that you can write it down. So please don't rush to write this down. Now, one of the things that we will, um, you'll need to do in today's uh, packet is uh, integrate and determine the flux through a loop of wire when you have a non-uniform magnetic field that's passing through the wire loop. And um, so essentially what we want to do is find the flux of magnetic field through a square loop of wire. And um, the non-uniform field that we're going to consider is the field that's due to a long straight wire, which is going to be residing near this loop. So if you look over here on the left side of the picture, we have a long straight wire and it's carrying a current and the current is going upwards in the figure. And you should know, of course, that the magnetic field that's produced by this wire um, will not be uniform. Of course, it's going to be stronger, closer to the wire, and weaker as you get further away. And we'll want to determine, the goal is to find the magnetic flux through the loop. Um, and we're going to assume that you have a constant current traveling through this long straight wire. Now, I'm going to point out a few of the dimensions, and then I'm going to have you guys copy this down and sketch it. And you're going to do um, one more thing then. So, in terms of the, uh, the dimensions, let's assume that the loop is a rectangle. It has a width W. It has a height H. Let's assume that the near side of the rectangle is a distance A from the center of the wire. And uh, let's also... Um, assume that uh, we're going to be integrating, okay? <laughs> so at this point, what you have to remember is the idea that uh, the wire is going to be producing magnetic flux, and that flux is going to be depending on the radial distance from the wire. So the further out that R is, the weaker the flux is going to be. And remember, these magnetic flux lines are actually drawn as circles. So the trick that we're going to play with the integration is to establish a thin strip uh, that we'll call dr inside of the loop. And so this is going to be your, your integration component here. And we're going to basically um, build up the area of the rectangle by adding together thin strips. Each strip has a, has a width dr, and we're going to allow this radius vector to essentially go from a minimum of A all the way out to a maximum of A plus W. And we'll be adding up the flux through each thin strip. Now the idea is, is that the flux through the strip can be calculated easily in the integral because we know that the magnetic field is constant everywhere in this thin strip. Okay, so what I'd like you guys to do now is the sub is going to pause this slide and I'd like you to copy the picture down. Now there's one other thing you're going to draw in this picture after you get it, and that is that I would like you to draw the uh, magnetic field directions on, uh, to the right side of the wire. I didn't draw those in my picture. Um, you're going to use your right hand rule. I'd like you to draw the appropriate symbol, and you can just draw a few symbols inside of the loop to give the idea. Okay, so I'm going to ask the sub to pause the slide, and then when we come back, I'll tell you which direction the magnetic field should be. Okay, so I'll, I'll talk to you in another minute or two. Okay, so um, hopefully you're all set with your sketch. Um, the magnetic field that passes through the loop should be going into the page. So hopefully you drew some magnetic field symbols with the X in the circle. Um, in fact, everywhere on the right side of the wire, the magnetic field should be going into the page. Uh, and that's, you know, you need to draw that. Okay, so now let's get down to the business of integrating. Um, we can start off with the basic formula that you should know, um, and you should remember that the magnetic field strength near a long straight wire uh, is going to be given by this expression, 
the important part is that it's directly proportional to the current in the wire, and it's inversely proportional to the distance. So the further away from the wire you get, the weaker the field gets. This expression for magnetic field gets plugged into the flux equation. Remember, flux is an area integral. And um, the area that we're concerned about here is the area of the rectangular loop. So putting this into the mathematical um, language, what we do is you, you substitute in the magnetic field expression. And um, when you integrate for dA, we're going to make dA equal to that, the area of that thin strip in our picture. The area of the thin strip is going to be given by hdr, where h is the height of the strip and dr is the width. And we're going to allow dr to vary from a to a plus w, as we said earlier. So the rest of this is basically just factoring out things that are constant. Of course, uh, this first term comes out. The current is constant in this example. The height is constant. And we're left with the integral of um, dr over r. And of course, again, we're seeing this inverse integral, which um, turns out to be the natural log. And um, the flux that you end up with coming through the loop is given by this final expression when you evaluate it. Okay, so it's really not all that difficult of an integral to do. And um, the point is, is that you have to do an integral here. Um, there's no way around it because the flux through the loop um, it, it can be thought of you know, it, as coming from a non-uniform field. So you can't just, um, you know, get away with not integrating. Uh, in the example that you're going to do in the packet today, the, uh, the setup is slightly different in terms of the, the dimensions of the loop and the parameters. And that's actually on purpose. I want you guys to kind of recast this problem in, in different parameters so that you can kind of play with it and get comfortable with it. The other difference in the problem you'll do in today's packet is that the current in the wire is not constant. The current's actually going to be changing, and that changing current, of course, is going to, uh, you know, affect, you're going to have a time-dependent flux. So there's a hint in the packet about how to handle that, and it's really not much more difficult than what we just did. So at this point, um, I guess I'll ask the sub to pause the slide, and you can copy down this math. And I'm pretty much done with uh, the presentation for today. Uh, please use the period to work on this packet in, in Teams. I'm going to ask the sub to collect your work when you're done. If you haven't finished everything, that's okay. I'd really like to see how far you guys can get on your own. Please remember that tonight you have a um, web assigned due. I'd like you to make sure that you're up to 75% of that. And when I see you tomorrow, we'll um, go through and see what we need to uh, touch up on. All right, good luck, everybody.